we're going to open up um, the n equals 200 file, association and correlation, n equals 200. And it would be fantastic now if having spent time practicing with SPSS and familiarizing yourself with the use of statistical tests and now being fully conversant with, with how to do this um, and recognizing the utility of SPSS as, as a learning tool, you will have already generated um, a histogram of the two data sets, convince yourself that they look normal, convince yourself that perhaps there is a difference still remaining between them, and run an analysis. So I'm going to open that file. That's the association and correlation n equals 200. And fortunately, because I'm ever so uh, generous, I have already been the data. So we don't even have to go through that step that you may recall from the distant annals of time, uh, the idea of binning the data to form a histogram. But that's already there for you. So now all we need to do is go to grow, uh, I think. So the fir first thing that I want to do, I'll just explain. Um, once you've collected some data, it's often very useful to visualize it. I hopefully have stressed this throughout uh, the sessions. That visual visualizing your data is a valid step in statistical, anal statist uh, statistical analysis, and extremely important and useful. Generally subjective, and therefore requires some form of opinion, but also valid because it sets alongside the general experimental context of any data that you've collected and alongside the um, anything else that you may have noted whilst collecting the data and any assumptions, actually looking at your raw data is a very useful step in helping you understand things like p-values that pop out at the end of a test. In fact, looking at a p-value without really understanding the data is a somewhat dangerous activity because you may come to conclusions that really aren't supported by the underlying data, and so you have to be very careful. So, and, and they help you make a much more informed discussion uh, when trying to present that data or those results to somebody, somebody else. So I'm sure you're ahead of me. So I'm going to go to graphs and the chart builder. And because I want to compare uh, these histograms, I'm, I'm going to plot a bar chart, so you'll see here. I'm going to have a bar chart, I'm going to have the side by side version. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put the binned weights, so not the scale weights, not the weights here with a picture of a ruler. I'm not going to put those ones, I'm going to put the scaled weights, sorry, the binned weights, which is now the, the ordinal variable of weight. I'm going to drag that onto the x-axis. And then I want to cluster by the type of trooper. So I've got that variable there. That's the nominal type of trooper. And I want to um, cluster by trooper type. So I'm going to drag that one onto there. Except my jittery pen doesn't. I apologize. I've got this. Oh, hang on. Okay, trooper type. I'll try and drag it. For some reason, my. Aha. I definitely need to buy the latest version of this device. So, if you've got something that looks like that, then you can press OK and you'll get a visualization of, of what this data looks like.
And so on this screen, uh, on my computer, it says that the Republic clone troopers are in blue and the Imperial stormtroopers are in green. So would anyone like to comment on the visual appearance of these, these histograms? Almost normally distributed, seems reasonable. Anyone want to add in anything else? Make a comparison between the two? Okay, so the mean of uh, Republic clone troopers appears to be different to that of uh, Imperial stormtroopers. Some may say more, some may say less. But it certainly appears to be a, uh, a difference. Um, yeah, I, I think anything around those seems like reasonable comments on the, on the appearance of the data. I'd say that the the um, the range of the Imperial Stormtrooper weight appears to be greater than that of the Republic Clone Trooper. Well, the standard deviation of the two seems to seems to differ. So one has a wider distribution than the other. And actually, that might be important for us uh, when choosing a test. One of the things about so a lot of, uh, there's a bit of a love affair that goes on with non non-parametric tests at the moment. So people will often tell you that a non-parametric test, they're better. There's a kind of, it's not, people like, or well, I've encountered individuals who, who like to make such statements. Now, let's take the man whitney U test that I've already mentioned and that we used uh, a few sessions back. One of the assumptions that the man whitney U test makes is that both data sets come from distributions with an identical form. So the distributions themselves may be different, but they have the same form. So they might not be normal. They might have some um, non-normal appearance, but both of the data sets are, have the same lack of normality. Fine, but the problem then with applying that test to this data is that both of these distributions don't have the same form. So we've already said they look normal, but they don't have the same form. One is wider than the other. One is narrower and more peaky than the other. That doesn't mean we can't use that test, but it, we need to bear it in mind when we apply it and say that that may contribute to uh, an incorrect estimate of the p-value that it spits out. Now, with the t-test, there's lots of different modifications of it, and you'll see that the one that I always use is that um, equal variance is not assumed. And that just means that I'm not assuming that my distributions have the same amount of variation or the same width. It gives you a slight underestimate of the p-value, but I prefer that because I'm a conservative kind of person. And in this case, that would also be true. So while I've been uh, nattering on about the look of distributions, you have whizzed ahead and said, well, let's get some of these tests done, because that's where the meat of it is. And so you've gone to analyze, compare means, and independent samples t-test. And then you said, well, I want to compare the weight based on a grouping variable, which is the trooper type. And then when asked to define the groups, you've defined them as, as zero and one. should have something that looks like that. And you can press continue. And then when you press OK, you get a bunch of numbers. And you said, oh yes, I remember that it spits out lots of numbers that I don't really care about. But there is a number that I do care about. And it's going to help me make an assessment. 
Does anyone know what number they're meant to be looking at? The standard deviation, and therefore the variance of our two distributions appears to be different. Um, mean also appears to be different. If we then look at the t-test results, what does this tell us? What's, what's the value that we really want to be reporting? I mean, you could talk about all of these. Significance. And out of those significant values, which one would you choose? 0, 2, 1. We have another conservative in individual in the room. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I would go for the equal variance is not assumed significance. And that's our p-value. So that says the probability that these two sample means have come from the same distribution is 0 0.021. So is there a statistically significant difference between the two groups? Do you want to reject or accept the null hypothesis? So that significance is our p-value. That's the probability that there's no difference. We're comparing against a significance level of 0.05. So anything low, below 0.05, we're going to say, yeah, there is a significant difference. Below 0.05, we're rejecting the null. I would suggest to you that, based on the criteria set out in the materials and methods section of our work, that indeed we will be rejecting the null hypothesis uh, because P is less than uh, 0.05, so our results are highly indicative that there is a difference between the weight of Imperial Stormtroopers and Republic Clone Troopers. So there's my um, there's my results set out for all to see, and I've, I've looked at that value there out of all the numbers that we could have looked at in that table. That was actually the only one that was in, of interest to me. The others tell you some vaguely useful uh, bits of information. So for example, it's telling you the difference in the means, and then it's telling you how confident you are in that difference of the means. These descriptive statistics, as someone said earlier, are very useful because they summarize what we can see in these two distributions. So we can see that standard deviations are different, indicated by the width of those two. And indeed, we can see that there is some kind of difference, or it's suggestive that there's a difference in those means as well, which the t-test has quantitatively confirmed. And then we could write down those results um, here, so we could we the things we've just spoken about we could summarise as as the results. So we found um, statistically significant difference p less than 0.05. Um, as we say earlier, looks normal. We might say that the uh, standard deviation is different. Groups. So in our discussion, we're going to look at the main, the main finding, uh, the the main finding of this work is that even excluding, so having excluded non-clones, there remains a difference in weight. between two groups, something like that. So that's our main finding.